Okay, so welcome everybody uh, to my talk. I'm going to talk about running Kubernetes clusters the Kubernetes native, native way. A uh, few words about me. I started my Kubernetes experience working for Vedas. It is biggest Czech hosting company. We were doing a lot of funny stuff like putting servers into the oil and I was automating data center and running Kubernetes there. Uh, then I switched to platform engineering. I was working for uh, Pellerk, uh, Solutions Architect. And now uh, I founded a new company uh, which makes a solution for running it, this solution, also platform based on KubeWirt for running Kubernetes in Kubernetes. Okay, and I would start from the question, do you like using Kubernetes in cloud? I guess yes, but there is all joke that there is no cloud. It's just someone else's computer. So when we're working with uh, Kubernetes, we usually work, we just work with top level entities and we don't see the bottom part of our iceberg. Uh, and this part is usually done by service provider. So when you're using Kubernetes, you usually don't care about uh, virtualization part, about networking, storage, how you provide, uh, how you provision your servers, uh, how you update your operating system and managing all this stuff. So today we are going to talk about this exactly bottom part, what should be done to provide and to make Kubernetes uh, as a service. Uh, when you're using Kubernetes in every cloud, you usually face with this theme. Uh, when you have all the components separated, uh, you usually talking with uh, Kubernetes control plane, which is running outside, outside of any worker node. And there are some entities like worker nodes, they separate it from a load balancer and persistent storage as well. So this way, you can even enable after scaling, cluster after scaling, the nodes can be scaled down or scaled up, or they can even, can even be fully removed, then run back again. Uh, your application will continue working uh, because those worker nodes are ephemeral. That works perfectly. But in case if you want to create your own cloud for Kubernetes, uh, you're usually facing with the question how to run Kubernetes on prems, uh, on bare metal. When you're running Kubernetes on bare metal, there are few options. Usually when people talking about this, they meaning take their servers and installing Kubernetes on them just using some standard tooling, for example, kubebottom, uh, kubespray, or K3, k3s. Uh, but in this way, instead of this beautiful scheme, you get something like this. So you have bare metal nodes, and you have all the services stuck together. Uh, they holding the same control plane, they, they are serving the storage and load balancers. Um, this theme has some disadvantages. First, it, it has no convenient management. Uh, the updates for all the services and the cluster itself is really painful because uh, in this way, um, many services not uh, prepared to be um, working on uh, such environment. They need to be um, more stable environment. In case if you want to replace some node, you have to remove all the services from this node, then update it, then join it back. This is Kubernetes way. Uh, this theme still does not allow you to scale to scaling. Uh, if you have um, specific amount of bare metal nodes, you can scale it. And it does not support multi-tenancy. Uh, the problem is that Kubernetes was never designed to provide hard multi-tenancy for your customers. Uh, in this way, you should be, um, it is more intended to run uh, separated Kubernetes clusters for every project or for every environment or even for specific uh, development team. Uh, okay, when we're trying to solve this problem, we facing with the other option uh, is to run private cloud, for example, OpenStack, which is very famous right now for this, and to run multiple small Kubernetes clusters on top of this. Uh, but problem on this theme is that you have really huge layer of um, OpenStack, which is really difficult if you'll try to see 
how it works. You still have to to find a way how you would update it. You, it is usually about having separate team, which will be responsible just for OpenStack. And you also need to have another people who will manage Kubernetes stuff. And nowadays there is third option, which is really works really well. Um, thanks to Kubevirt project and the environment it creates around it. Uh, this option means that we replacing this OpenStack layer with creating single management Kubernetes cluster and run multiply uh, small clusters just inside of this. So let's put those terms. We have management cluster, which is responsible for uh, your infrastructure and tenant clusters, which are more likely uh, cloud clusters, which you provide to the uh, tenants. Uh, the advantages of this theme is, uh, the, uh, is that it, it is the same ecosystem. So you can manage both clusters with the same tooling, for example, Helm, kubectl, the same approaches and the same configuration tools. Uh, it does support multi-tenancy because tenant clusters are isolated. Um, it, uh, the workers for tenant clusters runs as virtual machines and they're fully isolated from each other. So tenant clusters implement the same cloud pattern. Um, all the components are separated. You can even separate control plane, storage, networking. Uh, the management cluster is still the same. Uh, it is all in one uh, solution, but we're limiting it just for uh, solving specific stack, uh, stack of technologies. Uh, especially to run virtual machines, Kubernetes clusters, and databases. Um, so we decided to go by the way for pre preparing platform, which will contain, uh, keep all the open source technologies and will provide ready solution just uh, to install it in five, in five minutes and start using it uh, for provisioning your Kubernetes clusters. This is how it look like. So you can click and install some applications uh, just from this. Uh, you can provide the parameters in dashboard, but actually every application you're installing is just Helm chart, which is templating few YAML files, which are managed by operator approach. So virtual machine creation will look like this uh, simple YAML file. And finally, we created a platform which is um, which is solving all the infrastructure stack uh, from the layer one, where we have operating system and hardware. Uh, this layer also provides us uh, pre-configured Linux kernel and uh, Kubernetes cluster. We base this stack on Talos Linux. Uh, the next layer provides you storage. We based on uh, LinStore right now, but not hardly dependent on it. Networking based on KubeOVN and virtualization based on KubeVirt. The next layer means that you have to install some specific operators, um, cluster API and monitoring on your platform. Uh, this is also managed by open source technologies which are widely known uh, nowadays. And the layer uh, four means uh, that option, this dashboard actually where you can click and install user-faced applications. Uh, so we use Talos Linux for layer one and uh, Plug CD for delivering everything else. Uh, as about Talos Linux, I was already uh, making presentation about this. Uh, lately, you can see this in a link. Um, I will just uh, put short information of what the Talos is. Uh, the Talos Linux allows you to put um, image into your machine, then configure this machine with single configuration file. So just configure single configuration file, which you provide all the options you need to. Uh, machines, it splits to two sections. Machine section uh, describes the settings for machine uh, and cluster section is section which describes for all the cluster. Uh, in machine, you can specify what type of machine you want to, for example, control plane or worker, the certificates for accessing the machine itself, network configuration. It also supports uh, specifying virtual IP address. So we are 
uh, not it, it not required to having external load balancer and disk to install Talos Linux itself. While uh, cluster section includes control plane endpoint, which is used by all the kubelets, uh, certificates for Kubernetes and Kubernetes components configuration. So to configure your machine, you just apply this uh, configuration to the node using the similar tool to uh, kubectl, it's called Talos CTL. And then this machine start working. So this way we can provide uh, simply configure uh, the bare metal nodes uh, and to have the, to keep them in the expected states. So all the kernel modules, all the kernel versions will be totally the same. Uh, then we're moving to the next layer <clears throat> about installing platform. To install platform, we just let user uh, sim single YAML file, which creates container. Inside of, uh, it creates pod. Inside of this pod, uh, inside of this pod, uh, you can see web server, which is serving uh, Helm charts. And also it installs Flux CD. Then Flux CD installs all the needed components into the just prepared cluster. So we have uh, the same kubevirt, some monitoring, CNI, CRI, um, CSI, and things like that. Uh, when we want to update this cluster, we just replace this um, container, and it just and Flux just installs the new version of the components. So this way, we're delivering our uh, storage, which is also hardly dependent on the kernel because the replication works exactly in the kernel. Uh, we use um, a lot of features like uh, OpenVS switch and BPF, which is also dependent on the kernel version, and also kubevirt. Uh, all those components are simply installed by the simple installation method and also monitoring as, as well. Yeah, we have pre-configured monitoring stack. And now we're moving to the latest interesting part of the presentation is how we do managed Kubernetes service. Uh, I will repeat myself uh, that we provide fully compatible Kubernetes clusters with all the features like load balancing, persistent volumes, uh, and even pre-installed services. Uh, cluster after scaler also works um, out of the box. Uh, for making this working, we use Kamaji project. Uh, <clears throat> this project allows you, I would say it is like uh, Kubernetes control plane operator. It allows you to run uh, Kubernetes control planes uh, just by specifying them in CRD. Those control planes run as normal pods. Uh, so you have just few pods which are running standard Kubernetes services like control play, uh, API server, controller manager, scheduler. Um, Kamaji actually can be used for running control planes, which will be having workers in different uh, clouds, but we use it just with a kubevirt. Uh, with the Kamaji, we use cluster API, which is standard interface for creating clusters in Kubernetes. And now I'll show you how exactly it works. So when you ordering new Kubernetes cluster from the dashboard, the new application has uh, created. It is just Helm chart, which is keeping few YAML files. And then Kamaji, Kubeweird, and cluster operator providers will manage these, uh, those YAMLs. For example, we have this set of values and it will produce the next uh, resources, cluster resource, which is also linked to Kamaji control plane resource and Kubeweird cluster resource. As well, machine deployment, which is linked to Kubeweird machine template, and QBAD config template. The first one is managed by control plane provider, exactly by Kamaji. Uh, the second uh, and third resource, which is uh, dependent to Kubevirt, it is managed by Kubevirt infrastructure provider for cluster API. And the latest one, it is standard uh, method for bootstrapping the uh, Kubernetes clusters using Cluster API, it is managed by Kubad uh, Bootstrap Provider. It is actually creating a secret 
uh, this secret is keeping all the data needed to boot your new virtual machines. Actually, it is just cloud init uh, script, which contains all the needed informa information. It, it is actually containing just single command, could be admin join. So you have control plane, which is running as pods, and you have worker nodes, which runs with cloud init, which runs command kubadm join. Very simple. Uh, machine deployment is a resource of cluster API. It is very similar to Kubernetes deployment. So out of machine deployment, uh, the machine set is created, uh, which is creates also machine. And every machine is ordinary uh, virtual machine in Kubeweird, uh, which produces VMI, which produces pod with running key ammo process. Uh, okay, how are we going to, so we, we use uh, cluster API for spawning multiple tenant clusters from the management Kubernetes cluster, but all of them still running inside of the same management Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but there is still a question how to configure cloud controller manager, CNI plugin, and cluster autoscaler. Let's have a look. Um, at our platform design, we based platform on Flux CD. So we use Flux CD for delivering all the needed components. For example, you have management Kubernetes cluster and you have tenant Kubernetes cluster. We have single Flux CD, which runs in uh, management Kubernetes cluster and it installs all the needed components uh, on the same cluster as well into tenant Kubernetes clusters. Uh, for example, we have management Kubernetes cluster. We just run tenant control plane. Uh, then we run cloud controller manager. Then we run uh, CSI controller and cluster after scalar, which al already uh, connected to the tenant control plane. See that some pods pending to schedule. Uh, usually it is core DNS pods, but since we installed uh, CSI there and CNI, it sees that some nodes should be provisioned. So it creates cluster. Uh, and inside of this cluster, we also install CNI plugin and CSI node part. The important stuff, uh, the important thing here is that CSI node and CSI controller are separated. Uh, we decided to go by the um, cutting off any opportunity to go from the worker nodes, from the tenant Kubernetes cluster, to the management Kubernetes cluster. This approach is slightly different than uh, order, ordinary uh, clouds using. Um, so all the components which should be um, connecting this management Kubernetes cluster, uh, they runs in management Kubernetes cluster. Inside of tenant clusters, they're running just uh, daemon sets which helping you to mount specific devices, CNI plugin, uh, everything that not communicates is with management Kubernetes cluster. So finally, we have, um, I'll show you some screens. Uh, when you create new Kubernetes cluster, you see this amount of pods created. Uh, those two pods actually created by uh, Kamaji control plane provider. Uh, you can see that uh, there are four containers. There are API ser uh, server, controller manager, scheduler, and also um, connectivity component. Connectivity component is the specific component which allows you to run a uh, control plane outside of your worker nodes. So they can even be running on other clusters or other clouds. Uh, in this way, connectivity will, ins will ensure the connections from the uh, control plane tenant, uh, from tenant control plane to tenant workers, because there's still some uh, connection should be handled, for example, for making uh, webhook working, for making uh, webhooks working, and um, I know I API aggregation, so things like that. Uh, the next three components, uh, they are running cluster after scalar, uh, Kubeweird uh, Cloud Controller Manager and Kubeweird CSI Controller. They talks to tenant Kubernetes control plane and um, doing some operations. 
for example, user can see that uh, nodes appeared or disappeared in his cluster, uh, that persistent volumes automatically provision it, but uh, they will not know how exactly it works because of all of these standard components running outside of the tenant cluster. And the latest two pods actually cube virtual machines. Um, you can even uh, connect to them and see how exactly they work. But we will do the next thing. We will take cube uh, sorry, cube, cube config from the cluster API uh, bootstrap provider. So we will take uh, super admin cube config and save it to local file. Uh, the next command will switch context to using this cube config file, and we can see what is inside of tenant cluster. So when we run kubectl get node, we will see these two nodes running, actually our virtual machines, which are in management cluster, actually just ordinary um, pods. And we can see that some pods are running. Ta-da, we have a ready cluster. Okay, uh, this then, then the same way we're delivering also databases. Uh, we allow to create databases and do standard operations like manage users and access rights, configure backups. All this tech is done by operators. Uh, the, we see a really big benefit of running it outside of the virtual machines because they're fully controlled by us. And uh, we can be sure that uh, they work the same way as we expected. Uh, and we also have better performance just because of there is no any uh, issues on, uh, there is no any uh, lack of performance for virtualization. So for example, if you create uh, Redis, it's same creates uh, Helm chart with this small amount of values, which also produces few YAMLs which are managed by operator. Uh, that's it. This way we delivering services, managed services on bare metal, uh, which are managed Kubernetes, managed databases, virtual machines, load balancers, and many things like that. Uh, the good question about multi-tenancy, how is it working? Uh, as I told previously, we don't allow tenant Kubernetes cluster access to management Kubernetes API. So it is intended uh, to let your user access the management Kubernetes cluster only via some billing system or access directly their uh, services they ordered. Um, we, um, all the services will be provisioned automatically after uh, they Ooh, sorry, <clears throat> the, uh, when they accessing their cluster, they can order services like uh, load balancers, persistent volumes, they will be automatically provisioned. And as about tenant system, we have uh, this opportunity that you can install every tenant as separate application. Uh, in this way, tenant is like Kubernetes namespace is related to other ones, uh, but they can be um, running nested of each other. For example, tenant root has uh, domain assigned example org. If you create new tenant under it, it will assign full uh, subdomain to it if you don't provide any other host name for this. And tenant bar, and it will also append a second um, subdomain to the uh, parent host name. Uh, if you look inside, we can see that it works uh, pretty similar like Linux kernel namespaces working. Not Kubernetes namespaces, but Linux kernel namespaces. So when you create new uh, process, you can always specify that you want separate namespace for uh, mount namespace, networking namespace. This way we're providing uh, applications which runs on the tenant layer. Uh, those applications are etcd, monitoring, and ingress and they can be used by the uh, bottom tenants. For example, Kubernetes cluster here will use ingress from upper tenant because it is not existing here. And uh, tenant bar, we deployed Kubernetes cluster and Postgres, which uses monitoring of upper uh, tenant too. 
This allows us to create environments where users have a single Grafana where they can access all the um, all the alerts and all the metrics from the bottom tenants. This way how it works. Uh, in final, we got uh, all the environments which are unified and reproducible. Uh, we always had core specific kernel version and kernel models, and that works just perfectly. Uh, we provide simple interface for installation. Uh, and our platform covers all the entry infrastructure stack and needed to build cloud. Uh, we provide managed services. It is easy to extend because every application is just a set of YAMLs templated through the helm. Andre? Yep. Sorry, I don't think you've seen my pings, but you, you are at time. So if you can uh, very quickly- Got it. I almost finished. I just okay, wanted okay. to say that we are open source. And there are links. Uh, you can find uh, those projects and my previous um, presentation. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Victoria, that she helped me to prepare this presentation. And if there are any questions, I'm ready to answer them, if we have time for this. Uh, there are a couple of questions. Um, we don't really have time because we don't need to change over to the next person. Uh